everybody, I'm Karen, and today on Karen Puzzles, it is finally time for me to talk about the color changing puzzle. This is one of the hardest puzzles I've ever done. It is unlike any other puzzle I've ever done. So if you haven't heard of it, this is a 1000 piece puzzle where the pieces literally change color depending on what angle you look at them at. The image on the puzzle is a gradient and it is made by Lamington Drive, the same company who made the original 1000 Colors gradient puzzle. I have an entire video about that puzzle as well, so I'll link that right down below. So going into this, I was so confident because I can do the original gradient puzzle in two and a half hours, it's really not hard. But this puzzle took me 12 or 13 hours over a period of three days. Besides the silver crypt puzzle, which I did on this channel last year, besides that one, this is the most difficult puzzle I've ever done. And it is the first time in quite a while that a thousand piece puzzle has taken me multiple days to complete. So before I get into all of the details and my strategies and everything, I just want to be upfront that this puzzle is not cheap. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, my parents actually paid for this because it was a Christmas present to me. And it was definitely a very generous present because on Amazon, this costs $89. Yes, this puzzle is almost $100, but if you're really into puzzling, it is totally worth it. It's completely unique. It's an amazing addition to any puzzle collection. And since it is so difficult, you do get quite a lot of puzzling time for your money. So let's take a closer look. So the box comes shrink wrapped, which I like because it means that it doesn't get damaged in transit. And the box has the color changing effect on it as well, but only on the top. You can see where this plastic piece is glued on and the sides of the box are just the normal printing. The box is pretty simple. There are just a few logos on the sides and then nothing on the back. All right, I'm ready to open this up for the first time. I'm so excited. <sighs> Ooh, it's so pretty. All right, let me go ahead and cut this open. Oh my God, they're already changing color. It's so pretty. Ooh, these are beautiful. Oh, I can't even handle this. Oh my God, I'm moving my head and the colors are changing. This is so cool. How am I gonna do this? I don't even know what strategy to use, but this is so cool. So let's talk about the pieces. The pieces have the same plasticky layer that was on the front of the box. It's actually a process called lenticular printing. I'll link the Wikipedia page right down below if you want to learn more about it. Uh, you might have seen the same type of effect on DVD covers or book covers or like bookmarks. It's a pretty common printing effect but I have never seen it on a puzzle before. So you can see that each piece has two main colors that it switches between, and on the edges, you can see a little bit of the opposite color. That's going to come in handy later. The back of the pieces feel much more plasticky and smooth than the pieces from the original 1000 Colors puzzle, which are just normal cardboard. These are much shinier and the front has a lined texture, which you can feel when you run your nails over it. And again, that'll come into play later. So just like any other puzzle, I decided to start by separating out the edges. With the other gradient puzzles that I've done, I would tend to sort the pieces by color as I went, but for this one, it was pretty impossible to do that from the beginning, so I just started with the edge. So as I said, this puzzle is way harder than I anticipated. Here's what part of the issue was. In the original 1000 colors puzzle, and the halftone colors puzzle, and the vibrating colors puzzle, the cut is essentially the same between all of them, and the pieces are really unique. 
So even if you don't have the best color vision, you can still find the pieces you need based on the piece shape, and you can be confident that they're in the right place. But in this puzzle, I guess because they were cutting such a thick, different type of material, the pieces are much more uniform across the entire thing. So you do still have all of these standard piece shapes with four ins and four outs and three ins and three outs, etc. But the variation between them is not nearly as drastic. So there were tons of times while putting this together that I thought I had a piece in the right place, but it turned out to be wrong because so many pieces seemed able to fit where they didn't actually go. Which was kind of frustrating, it definitely added to the difficulty. It meant that you couldn't really just place one-off pieces, you had to keep working in from the edges, because you had to have at least two sides filled in before you could verify that any piece was in the right place. And even then, you can see here that I had these two pieces swapped, and they completely fit but it was only when looking more closely at the colors from different angles that I realized they were in the wrong spots and I had to swap them. So this is much more of a logic puzzle than most jigsaw puzzles are, because if I had gathered all of the pieces that were that color and they didn't fit where they needed to fit, clearly something was wrong, so I had to rearrange the pieces until they all fit into place. However, all that being said, I will say that since the pieces are so thick, when you are sure about where a piece goes, it is just so satisfying to click it into place. Okay, so I do have a few more thoughts to share, but first let me play you all of the footage that I filmed while putting this puzzle together. All right, so I'm literally like three seconds into putting this together. The first thing I've noticed is that you kind of have to work to get the pieces together. I guess it's because of the over, like the plastic overlay that's on them. And once they're together, it stays together. Like you would not have to glue this. These are solidly together. Okay, I've had a breakthrough. I just turned all of the pieces so that they're facing the same way, which is so much easier. And now I feel like I'm actually like making progress on this. So I just organized all of these pieces. And you might be wondering how I know at what orientation they're in. And it's because on the film that's on top of these, there's actually horizontal lines running through it, which I realized like they're going all the way across the puzzle. So you can tell if the piece is like this, it's a different color, um, the lines are vertical, you want them to be horizontal, and then you can see what color they are. And hopefully that will make this easier and make this go faster, because this is all I've done so far. All right, so I didn't film this because it took forever, but I went through every single piece and I laid them out so that they're facing the right direction with those horizontal lines that I mentioned before. And I realized something, which is that down here, if you look at it from this angle, I don't know how much the camera is picking it up because like my eyesight is seeing it differently than the camera, but you can see that when they're blue like this, there's actually a little, like on the edges of each piece, you can see what the opposite color is. So anytime there's like a pink piece where you can see a little bit of blue or a blue piece where you can see a little bit of pink, Pretty sure those all go in the same area. So I think I've cracked it. I think I might be ready to, you know, I think I might actually move forward on this now. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. This is, this is a lot. There's a lot happening here. All right, it is 1 p.m. I'm starting to feel a little bit uh, fatigued of this puzzle. Here is my progress so far. I feel like I'm starting to figure it out, but it's definitely been slow going. And this little area right here, for some reason, I just can't seem to put any of these blue pieces into place. So that's been frustrating. I think I'm going to give it like another hour today. I was hoping I would finish it all in one day. I don't think that's going to happen. All right, here is my progress at the end of day one. I've worked on it for probably like four hours already, four or five. 
and I'm not even like a third of the way through. This is crazy. I'm hoping that the closer I get to the end, the easier it'll become, but like, this is so difficult. This is way harder than I was expecting. All right, it is the morning of day two. It's probably like 9.30 a.m. Ready to get back to this. So I set up the camera doing the top down shot again because honestly, this is probably gonna take me all day to finish. So I'm not gonna film the entire thing like I usually do because oh my God, that is so much footage. So instead, I'm just gonna do a photo time lapse along the way of me finishing it. Hopefully I can finish it today. I feel like I'm getting more of the hang of it as I go. This is definitely a puzzle with a learning curve. <laughs> so it's been about two hours. I'm about to stop for lunch. I think I've made pretty good progress here on this side. So it's definitely way more slow going than I originally thought. Also, it's so weird from this angle to see this whole area as like pink and red because when I've been working on it from like this angle, I don't even know, like right about there, it's all blue. So I've been putting in blue pieces, but then I just walk like three feet to the left and suddenly that's all pink. So it's about 3 p.m. I'm losing the light, so I think I'm gonna call it a day for today. I spent about six hours on it today and I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna finish it tomorrow, but I will say this is the thousand piece puzzle that has taken me the longest in a very long time. This was so difficult. Hello everybody, welcome to day three of the color changing puzzle. I do have a bit of a cold, so I apologize for any sniffling that you'll hear in this part of the video, but it is 8.30 on a Saturday morning. I feel confident that I can finish this today. Let's get right to it. So I think part of the reason why I did this whole section first, the part that's closest to me, is because when you're looking at these pieces and then these, you know, you're at basically the same angle. So they look like they're the color that they're going to be. But when it comes to this whole area, I'm looking at these pieces at a different angle. So the color of these pieces looks different than what they'll look like up there. I don't know if that makes sense, but here's my strategy. I have a piece of paper, I'm gonna place it here, I'm gonna put these pieces up here on this paper, and then it will be at the same like horizontal level, so they'll look like the color they're gonna look like once I actually put them in. I hope that made sense. back to voiceover Karen so one of my main strategies which I'm sure would have looked crazy to anyone who didn't know what this puzzle was was I kept sort of rocking back and forth in my seat and the reason for that is that some of the colors have much more variation in them than others so if I moved my body to where I could see the pieces as yellows it was much easier to tell what went where than it was when they were all blue. So I did a lot of standing up and then sitting down and then leaning back and forth. This is a very physical puzzle. So keep that in mind if you are thinking of doing it. But one good point to this is that it does kind of give you a fail safe to know if you have the pieces in the right spot or not, because they might look right when it's one color, but then you lean to the side and when they're a different color, it's totally wrong. So you do have more than one opportunity to double check if the pieces are in the right place. So you'll also want to make sure that you have really good lighting. I worked on this puzzle during the day in natural light. And since the colors are all you have to go on, you cannot do this puzzle in dim lighting. Also, I just wanna say it is just so bizarre to have pieces that look like one color from one angle that looks nothing like the spot you're trying to fill, but then you put it in place and suddenly it is the perfect color. You really have to trust your own eyesight and be good at looking for the exact shape of the piece that you need because the colors are just constantly changing. And I also wanna say that on camera, I'm sure it looks like I'm just really bad at puzzles because I keep trying pieces that clearly do not go where I'm trying them. This puzzle was kind of hard to film because it does look nice and colorful, 
but you really do have to see it in person to get the full color changing effect. With the camera on a tripod, you know, you just see the one color because that line of sight is not moving at all, but when you are a human person who is constantly like sort of moving back and forth, the colors are constantly changing. But just like with any other puzzle, it definitely got easier towards the end when there were fewer choices for which pieces to put where. Also, I got more used to what I was looking at and I was more able to see what orientation each piece would have based on what the edges of the pieces looked like. So that made it much easier because I could line up the pieces in a grid and then just put them in one right after the other. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be doing this puzzle again, just because it's a lot of time to dedicate to one puzzle, but I'm so happy that I did it once because it was such a unique puzzling experience. So once it's done, this puzzle is so beautiful in person. It is definitely a challenge. It is not for beginner puzzlers, but if you manage to put it together, it is probably the most beautiful puzzle I've ever seen. Plus, since the pieces are so thick, they hold together without any kind of tape or glue. You do have to smooth down the pieces. Usually I do this just for show, but in this case, I really did have to go over and press everything firmly down into place. But then you can pick up the entire thing as one piece and you can even hang it on the wall without gluing it together. It would definitely be a conversation piece and a really nice piece of home decor. So I hope that was enough of a deep dive into my color changing puzzle strategies. I would love to know in a comment if this is the type of puzzle you would want to attempt, or if you are more into more traditional puzzles that don't change color depending on what angle you look at them. I'll have all of the links for where you can get this right down below. If you're in America, it's probably easiest to get it on Amazon, where, as I said, it is about $90. And it would really help out my channel if you used my Amazon affiliate link, which will be right down below. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the box for this puzzle is the same size and basically the same design as the other thousand piece puzzles from this same brand. So they all look really nice on a shelf together, except for this side where for some reason they moved the logo over to the other side of the box. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, if you're interested in those other puzzles from this brand, I have entire videos about all three of them. The original 1000 colors gradient puzzle, the 1000 halftone colors puzzle, and the 1000 vibrating colors puzzle. So I'm going to link all three videos right down below. So your comment code word for this video is magic because these pieces literally look like magic. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more puzzle videos and I'll see you all next time.